Hey, John, today's a big day, huh? You finally get to pitch your first story. Yeah, I think so. I'm just, I'm really nervous. I mean, this is an idea I've really been thinking about for a long time. I'm just sure not. you'll do fine. Besides, today's a good day for it. Yeah, but Ellie's pitching, and she was trained by Steve Wax. I mean, that guy is practically magic at pitching. And there is that whole thing where she's in touch with the spirit of the story. Don't worry about that. You have a great idea. Yeah, but what if it's not in the book? It doesn't matter how good my story is if it's not in the book. That book contains every single story, past, present, and future, that we've ever done. And if it's not in the book, then it's not getting made. We owe it to the fans to get our stories right. I guess we'll just have to see. Just believe in yourself! What he said. It's the editorial pitch meeting, so welcome. This is your greeting. We're ready to give your ideas a look and see if they're approved by the book. Ha <laughs> ha, pitch meeting theme song, yeah. Take it away, Tom Brevoort. Thank you, Nick Lowe. All right, who's up first? Holy pile. Okay, so the Fearless Defenders are going to go off into space, and in space they're going to fly around. down from the days of Stanley, editor to editor. Can I please, Tom, can I, can I? No! Hey guys, look who I found outside. It's the new assistant editors, Xander and Devin, that's it. Uh, boy, I gotta tell you, it's a wonderful day to be an editor, isn't it? Absolutely nothing could ruin my mood today. The book. It's gone. The book? You don't mean... Yeah, Tom. The book that has every idea we've ever had and will ever have, but they're all contained? Yes, that book, Tom. You can't be serious. This is all I know how to do. I don't have any marketable skills. Making comics is what... We can't... There's not... It can't be... That's not true. You're lying. You are a liar. Shut up! It's been a pleasure working with all of you. Did my pitch get approved? You don't remember? The book is blank. We have 
no idea if your pitch got approved. Oh. Well, what are we going to do? The seniors went off to have another meeting to try and figure out what to do. We're waiting for them to get back. Okay. Also, everything's late. Oh, we'll just wait for them to get back then, and they'll tell us what to do. So what are we going to do? Has this ever happened before? According to legend, it happened once before, in 2002. Well, did anything bad happen? Did anything bad happen? With the book blank, editors were forced to create their own stories. And do you know what they created? Marvel! We gotta find that book. But that doesn't answer my biggest question. Why do you have a copy of Marvel, Lauren? Uh, anyway, who outside of Marvel Editorial even knows about the book? No one, just us. <laughs> just us, great okay. But that means... Oh my god, it's one of us. It was an inside job. Uh... That's ridiculous. Is it? Huh? Yes. The book's over 70 years old. It's probably just falling apart. Yeah, the words probably fell off the page. That might be the case, but we need to figure out what caused the book to go blank. Well, who's gonna do that? I'll do it. Why you? Because I, too, was going to pitch. You? Yes, me. I'm gonna go door to door, and I'm gonna track down whoever did this until I figure out who's responsible. We are so screwed. You told the rest of them to come out here. Iceman and Angel were asleep. All right, cool. So I guess we'll just, like, wait for them. So, how's everyone doing? I'm good. It's good to have you back on the team, Kitty Pride. Oh, good. No, it's good to be here. I like it. I mean, yeah. it's, you know. It's, it, to be honest, it kind of reminds me of my uh, childhood in Alaska. It's very cold and snowy here. Oh, you, you're from somewhere cold? I am also from somewhere cold. I'm from Russia. Yeah? Yeah? Yes. That is why I have a Russian accent. That's that's cold. Yes, huh? very cold. Well, I'm, I uh, am from Illinois, and it can get pretty chilly out there. What? Yeah, real cold. Well, okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean like, uh, so we were just in, uh, we were, Kitty and I, Ileana, Kitty and I were just in New York, as you know. Yeah, it gets cold. It, it gets but, colder, but it's not yeah. Alaska. I imagine it's not Russia. No, cold. it's not uh, Russia. Okay. It's Have you cold. ever waited for the train at 2 o'clock in the morning? That platform gets really cold. You know you're supposed to be a role model. Wait, uh, why are you waiting at the platform for 2 a.m. for a train? I mean, you know. But anyway, it's not... Cold, cold. Oh, well, it's I mean, just I a little chilly. I could, I can be in, in New York with no jacket in winter. It's fine because in Russia you are very cold. Well, I mean, yeah. but I had a really big coat. Like, I mean, I had so to get a huge coat. Yeah. 
No, but, I, but that's like, why I had to wear it. Look, my face. I wear a huge cold. coat in Russia, and I'm still cold. My lips would get so chapped. You have no idea. You should wear masks. When I go to Illinois, I just wear a t-shirt, no matter what time of year it is. Yes, you don't. You, yes, windy yeah. city. Oh, I didn't even notice why they call it that because the wind is not even affecting me at all. Yeah, it's. I cool. actually read about that, and it's um, it's actually about more of the politics and the oh. hot air from the politicians that they call it windy city. I don't think that that's true. That I, is maybe true. they've never stood uh, on the platform waiting for a train because it is windy. I when I when I was in the, before Professor X found me and I was in like normal school, I had to do a report and I had to go through microfilm and find the articles citing that. Ugh. Have you had to search through hours of microfilm in a library? No, I haven't, old man. Well, he's he's actually younger than us. That's true. Should we? Should I go try and get him again? Yeah. Let's call it off. Let's call it off. Just forget it? Yeah, come back later. Go to sleep. I'm not... Oh. Greetings, Spidey fans. Dylan, the superior Spidey intern here. So stir those long boxes back in the closet because it's time for the story of Doc Ock's death and resurrection. The first time. After the Spidey clone known as Kane kills Doc Ock, a spectacular Spider-Man number 221, way back in 1995... Stunner is left heartbroken. She swears to exact her revenge against Kane for murdering the only man she ever loved. But good villains don't stay dead. Just ask the Green Goblin. And so with this in mind, the secret cult of assassins owes the hand goes grave robbing and comes back with Doc Ock's body. However, the resurrection ritual requires a human sacrifice. And since Spider-Man won't accept the honor, Stunner volunteers to sacrifice herself to bring her love back. But you can't sacrifice a virtual reality construct. Although the resurrection is a success, Angelina, the real body behind Stunner, slips into a coma. Now she has returned, swearing vengeance in the name of Otto Octavius on none other than the superior Spider-Man himself, Otto Octavius. So that's the history, but how will Otto deal with the return of his former love? Keep reading to find out.